In today's show, Katie Heindel, the author of Basketball Feelings, joins the program, and we talk about it. You guessed it. Basketball, feelings, Damian Lillard trade stuff. Welcome to Lockdown Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What? Up world, it's your past first point guard and trail Blazers reporter Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making the show your first listen, coming at you every single weekday, Monday through Friday. So tell your friends, make it part of your daily routine. It's Locked On Blazers, your team every day. Today's episode, a very special one. Friend of the program, returning guest, and rocking a Rashid Wallace jersey, <laughs> the author of Basketball Feelings, a newsletter you should subscribe to so you can get the podcast as well, or just the wonderful writings in your inbox. Katie Heindel. Katie, how you doing? I'm doing well, Mike. You know, I had to, you know, I had to dust this off, bring it out. It's old, so I very and it's a child's jersey. So I have to be very careful with like where and when and the conditions in which I, I wear it, but it felt ripe today. Well, the good thing is that podcasting is not really a contact sport. You could be very, you could be very still. You could sweat um, though. So, yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to try to really turn up the heat here and really make, really make this one. I uh, like fu- fully challenging. Um, Katie, I, I, what I love about your work is that you have a way to sort of, have this meandering nuance to tease out um, the the sort of what makes things special from the mundane. And I, I think what we need here as a, as a Blazers watching people <laughs> is to tease out some nuance from what is quite frankly, like just a, just a whack time, a whack time. A franchise icon wants to leave. The Blazers are like, it's stuck in the middle, whether they're going to let him go where he wants to go. So uh, let's just start broad. Does Damian Lillard owe Portland a broader choice or does he have, does, is he allowed to say, I want to move to Miami, help me get there. First, I think meandering nuance is a great way to classify my beat. Thank you for that. Hey, no now problem. I can just. I'm a, long, I'm a long time. time reader. Yeah. Long time reader. So <laughs> I've I've been meandering along with you. Um, but no, um, I'm like brace yourselves, Blazers fans. I don't Uh-oh. think at this point, <laughs> Damian Lillard owes fans, uh, the franchise, the city of Portland, anything. Um, I mean, I would venture so much to say is, did he ever? But you know, this guy just—it's what it's been ten seasons. 11 even. 11. Okay. 11 years. A de- more than a decade. It's been more than a decade. A decade and change. Um, if there were any like numerical <laughs> values that you would put on owing someone something, I feel like a decade is pretty solid. And then you give it an extra year and you're like, okay, and, like nothing's really changed. And I would also say, you know, to Dame's argument for leaving, he sat through some pretty volatile changes in the front office um, in like losing teammates that were especially close to him and they're looking like there was a plan and him being promised there was a plan no plan ever really you know I, I don't need to repeat this I know I know Blazers <laughs> fans know very well you know all the hardships that the franchise has gone through but I think when you get to the point when when you're when you're talking about what someone owes what a person owes a nebulous as entity as a basketball franchise actually is, or like a business at the end of the day, that's a slippery and pretty dark slope. Uh, and one I do not think anyone should venture down. Yeah, the the O question is interesting, right? Because I think we think about it from the other direction, mostly. Like, what do the Blazers owe Damian Lord? They owe him a shot. But then we get here and it's like, Dame's asking out. He owes us more than that. And it's like, I don't think I'm not sure anybody giving you everything that he's got, though, because I mean, like, if you want to, like, break it down into owing then in the owing camp, I'm always curious as to what he still needs to show or like what qualifies leaving. Like, what hasn't he given yet? And if that's just a championship and him winning one in Portland, 
I don't really think that falls solely at his feet. Right. right? Um, I think he's taken things as far as he can, as many times as he can. I don't think he's helped by the constant, like just the really cyclical conversation that happens this time every season, which honestly, that's what I thought this was at first, but then it kept up of like him. Oh, is he going to leave? Is he going to stay? Him having to say like, no, I always want to stay. <laughs> like that's going <laughs> to wear on you too, because you're not believed. Like you are fundamentally not believed. And Toronto fans are like this as well. Like we don't think <laughs> anything, we're deserved any good things. Or like, you know, and you've been burned before. So I get it. When you get the good things, you're like, they're not going to last. Like these yeah, people aren't going to stick around. But Dame did stick around for such a long time. And to me, the Miami move makes a lot of sense um, in like, yeah, like the on-court fit. But also I'm just like, this guy's <laughs> like, he's really like str struggled it out as much as like a, an NBA player can. Like, let him go to Miami Beach and just chill. Like, don't you want to see this man wear sunglasses more than what, like four days a year? I do. Yeah. Do you remember where he wore that? Um, I, I, this is maybe an overused word, but iconic outfit when they were in LA and he wore like a suit jacket. It was like a three piece suit jacket and he wore a vest, but he wasn't wearing a shirt underneath. So yes. he was wearing like a suit with his, <laughs> my man could wear that every day in Miami. Every day. He could run every day. It's every very day. warm. <laughs> um, he spent a decade living in the Pacific Northwest. We don't really have temperatures like that. It's just, mm -hmm. um, you can't wear the shirtless suit look. Um, so yeah, you got to wish him well. Also, I think like on the Dame front, he kind of, in a way, said this was going to happen. Like he was, he was very much like, "Hey, if you don't do the following things to like, because mm -hmm. I want to be here in this. If you don't, if you go in this direction, I'm going to ask for a trade." Like he couldn't have been more clear with that. And then it went that way, and he's like, "I would like, I would like to be traded." And it's like, "Oh, okay." So well, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like he did. He did say that. Like he did kind of say as as clearly as a star maybe ever has. Like I want to be here under these conditions, and mm -hmm. then those conditions very specifically don't arise, which I think the Blazers are probably doing the right thing. Like I think in a weird way, everyone is in the right here. Um, and, and it's like, okay, now now it's you know now now we're heading in the other direction. I, I want to think about it from the Blazers' perspective, from the perspective of a business in in the second segment. Before we do that. Let's talk about Fan Duel. Take your first swing at betting on MLB on Fan Duel and get 10 times your first bet amount and bonus bets up to $200. That's right, just 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose, that's $200 you can spend on betting everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run to your fees to nerfies, whatever you want. It's all on this app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. No better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right. I'll chat you with Katie Heindel author of Basketball Feeling. Subscribe to the newsletter. Get the podcast. Pre-order her book. When's the book coming out, Katie? I can't. I'm not going to make any definitive promises. On okay. That. Can't pre-order pre it yet. Pre-order pre the book in this this decade. Sometime yes. over the next 11 years. We'll give a game time window. Within the next year. It, I think within the next basketball season. How okay. Okay. I, we put a little too much pressure on you in the middle of the show. It wasn't our intention. That's usually an end of the show. <laughs> That's usually an end of the show press. Um, as our music comes back, because we're on loop here. Uh, that's how. That's how you know is we're recording in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, Katie, we talked about sort of what Dame owes the Blazers, and I think you you believe that he doesn't owe them much. There's some Blazer fans that he owes them to expand the list. Um, I, can I, I offer this one thing? Anthony Davis once famously expanded the list. He expanded the list to teams he didn't want to play for. The dude always wanted to play for the Lakers, and he said, I would play for the Celtics. Sure, sure. <laughs> the Celtics, for sure. I could definitely trade me there. It's um, There is something noble about not BSing this um, mm -hmm. and saying, this is the one place I want to go. Um, I think you could rub people the wrong way, and I think you're allowed to be rubbed the wrong way, but whatever. I, there's something noble about, about living your truth publicly or having Aaron, your agent Aaron Goodwin live your truth publicly truth publicly what what do the blazers owe damian lillard like on the flip side do they owe him 
sending him to his preferred destination or do they owe fans like perfect team building or, or something to that effect? Um, I think they got to send him where he wants to go. Oh, right? oh no hardball here. <laughs> no, I mean, one, it's not like a particularly appealing uh, off season in that. I mean, again, like Damian Lillard certainly opens things like that name. That person opens things up for a lot of teams. My dog is taking a chug of water right it's, at this moment. It's hot. It's hot. It's <laughs> summertime. Too, yeah. He's like, this is too tense to talk about. Oof. Um, so but in that sense, I think you also want to signal, especially as a franchise that maybe has looked a little bit dicey at times, that you do the right things by people who invest in you at time and time again and, and kind of decide to stick with you and believe in you. And maybe there was more proof to the contrary. And it would have been a better or more opportune time for Dame to leave like probably five years ago. You know, he's, he's still like a phenomenal player, but if you want to look at it in those terms, it would have yeah. been an easier decision for a lot of other franchises. So I think in terms of expanding the list, fit-wise, I don't think he needs to. Ask-wise, I think it's just like he's being who he always was, which is a very honest and consistent person who keeps having to like prove that he's honest and consistent, which can make you feel like you're losing your mind a little bit. But yet, no, I don't think, I think the franchise has to send him where he wants to go. I've seen that kind of blow up in notably Toronto's face, but in other franchise faces when you don't do the right thing by some of your fun, like your, your fundamental, like framework, foundational guys. And like Damian Lillard does that to the Blazers probably more than any other, even my beloved Rashid. Um, was and they, and they sent him to the hawks very briefly he's a great like he's it's not the same wheelhouse but as we're talking about like what is owed and how you kind of do right by a franchise and do everything sort of by the books like look still how maligned somebody right. like rashid was in the end right like eh. you can't like you, you dame has done everything right to his absolute like best ability including just being up front it hurts when someone's just, like I want to leave you and I'm going exactly here for yeah. all these reasons, for all these things that you don't have, whether this is a friendship, a personal relationship, work, or in this case, Damian Lillard saying, I want to go to the heat. Yeah. And also like if you've ever uh, been through a breakup, living in the same apartment as someone that you've broken up with oh, is man. really brutal. So, so don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Trailblazers. Yeah. <laughs> do not bring him in against his will because um, if you're still paying rent with someone that you, um, someone that you both don't like each other, it gets, uh, it's just no fun. It's no fun. Um, your landlord can figure it out. I promise. I, I wonder with like, sort of, you mentioned like doing right by him. Joe Cronin, Blazers GM mentioned this in, a press conference in Vegas is like that he's, he did right by CJ McCollum and he, mm -hmm. you know, sent him a place that he wanted to go. And he did right by Josh Hart and found him a place he wanted to go. Josh Hart, beloved trailblazer one year, 12, 12 calendar months in Portland, beloved in 12 calendar months. Um, but he, he, uh, to me, that reads like, we'll eventually acquiesce mm -hmm. Dame. Mm -hmm. Because how are you going to be like, we did right by CJ McCollum, but then we, we traded Damian Lillard to the Spurs. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, it's like CJ had to, had to take care of him. That's a franchise icon. This other guy, he handled it a little bit different or like moreover, like he just had more power in the league. And so he could exercise that power. So we traded him to the wrong spot. I, I, it reads to me like this ends with Dame getting traded to Miami. And what this is posturing is like, Hey, we all want this to happen this way. Miami, give us everything you got. Give us all, give us everything you got. Do you, how do you see this playing out? Like if, if do you think this ends with Damian Lord rocking that shirtless uh, suit in South Beach? I mean, yes, at this point I do. I think when these things draw out for this long and, and nothing has clarified, um, it always signals to me that there's a lot going on that, you know, like, you know, tip of the iceberg about right. uh and i just can't picture the alternative i can't picture or i guess several alternatives either him coming back which as you alluded to would be a nightmare uh and then you know he's just gonna force a trade or ask his way out again like whether that's middle of the season uh or again next summer and it'll be a pretty bleak year and what should be i think an exciting 
year that's for the, the real franchise. Key. Yeah, yeah, that's the real key is that they're in a good spot, right? Like they're 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 actually in a really good place to pivot off of Damian yeah. Lillard and like have a new thing. And you so dovetail it from pain into excitement. It's the oldest yeah. trick in the book. <laughs> <laughs> when you have a bad breakup, where they say you go out, you see your friends, you do things, you do some activities. Yeah, you, you get a haircut and go on vacation. Everybody yeah. knows this. Yeah, and that's like scoot for you. So yeah, you've got that on the way. <laughs> got something to look forward to. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then if he goes, if they send him away to just, yeah, some other, I don't know, any other franchise that is not where he wants to go, I'm sure they would treat him well and those fans would be so thrilled to have him. But like, why? He, yeah. he gave you one specific place for a reason because you have a relationship with him that constitutes that sort of two way honesty. And that's a, that again, I'll go back to saying like what you signal around the league. You know, that's a great thing to have as a franchise. It absolutely is. And it, there's there's power in that, especially if you're a franchise that's not necessarily used to being uh, such a big destination for free agents, you know, yeah, or, yeah. or like they're not gonna sign stars. Yeah, they're not going to sign free agents. So doing right by people. So they want to like when they get here, they want to stay here is important because they're, they're literally not going to sign stars like that's yeah. just not going to happen. But basically, 22 teams in the league don't sign stars. That's just like re that's a that's kind of a reality. Um, so if you aren't going to do that, like being a place it's like, oh, yeah, if you get there, people want to play there type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's there's value in that. I, I think also just like pragmatically basketball. Damian Lord was going to naturally have a small window of teams that were interested in him because he is. He just turned 33 on uh, last on July 15th, uh, cancer season for your boy. Uh, happy birthday, Dame. Oh, that uh, makes sense. I never looked does. into it, but that makes yeah. a lot of sense. <laughs> it does. There is actually like a spinoff of Locked on Blazers where we just talk about uh, <laughs> basketball astrology and everyone's rising signs and why they are the way they are. Um, but that's... I'm gonna, David Locke. Fandle's gonna, Fandle's gonna have to cut the, yeah. yeah, Fandle's <laughs> gonna have to cut the check. Um, <laughs> I I can't give away these insights for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and someone who lives in my house would be really good at this, and uh, she, she's gonna want the check also. Uh, but <laughs> uh, like, Damon Lord is is a very specific player. He's he's 33. He's owed a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He's a point guard in a league that's rich in point guards. Like, even if you were to say like, Dame, expand your list. Okay, Dame expands the list to four or five teams, right? And it's like Philly and Bro Brooklyn and 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 Boston, maybe. I don't I don't really get it from Boston's sense. I get it from Boston's sense, but I don't get what the Blazers would get back because I don't understand getting like paying a bunch of money to Jalen Brown. Doesn't make mm -hmm. sense to me. Philly is this is like the same version of the Tyler Hero conundrum, except with the Tyrese Maxey conundrum. It's like we already have a really good twenty two year old guard. <laughs> we like that. That's not a, that's not a thing. This franchise covets we don't covet that so then you're you're in the same spot mm -hmm. brooklyn uh like they're not gonna trade you nick claxton that's not the point so it's like spencer denwitty and a bunch of draft picks uh, that's probably might be more appealing because mm -hmm. of like f assets or whatever but it's like it's not dramatically better it's just better it's just it's just like a little bit better so like okay i want this a little bit better offer from brooklyn Otherwise, like which team in the league is really pining to get Dame? Like is 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 I, I guess Utah is the dream, right? Is that Danny Ainge says, I got a pile of picks, baby. <laughs> um, but like even then it doesn't, um, you know, and you end up with Jordan Clarkson, who's really a fun fellow. But again, like it's mm -hmm. it's not. So I, I just think even the idea that Dame should expand his list, even if he did. The teams that would be natural suitors don't even have that much better of a package than Miami. So it gets you in the same mess. Um, but I didn't bring you on here to talk assets, Katie. I was That's just going to say, how bleak would it be, even for a Portland fan to next season, watch Damian Lillard play in Utah? <laughs> you would hate it. You it would, would hate it. Awful. Yeah. It would be awful. You want to yeah. be happy for your favorite franchise players when they move on. It sucks. But you also want to be like, okay, they're in like a good, they're a good team that understands them, that really wanted them. They're not just like, it wasn't just for picks. And now they're like in the mountains yeah, doing nothing. 
<laughs> yeah, now it's it's and wearing those jerseys that don't make sense. The Jazz yeah. have had too many colors. The Jazz have had too many colors. If I other podcast, Mike Richmond's locked on the Jazz have had too many colors podcast. Pick a color scheme, Utah. Okay. Um I, I, Again, it's we're it's a morning record, okay? Yeah. It's a little bit a little we're bit a little well. bit different energy. We're doing different well. energy. Um, okay, you mentioned you mentioned like rooting for the player when they leave. Mm -hmm. One of the big reasons I had you on here is because nobody understands what what it was like to watch DeMar DeRozan go somewhere he didn't want to go better than you. Nobody. Nobody has written about it more clearly and precisely and with meandering nuance, some have said, than you. So let's talk about the parallels between DeMar DeRozan getting shipped off to San Antonio Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. what could happen to Dame in the third segment. Join us there, won't you? Still a pass for his point guard. Still Mike Richmond. You are still listening to Locked on Blazers, still joined here by Katie Heindel, author of Basketball Feelings. Katie, this when the when the Raptors mm-hmm. ahead of the 2018-19 season decided to make their their big swing and trade for Kawhi Leonard, they had to send away a franchise icon. At the time, DeMar DeRozan was probably one of the three or probably the third, fourth best player in the history of the franchise. Maybe higher. He was up mm-hmm. there, certainly. Mm-hmm. It's hard to figure out where him and Kyle were, and then Kyle won a championship. And I, said, I don't know. Well, that, that's that's for someone. That's for a rankings podcast. Uh, I'll leave that to the ringer. Um, but it is when they sent Demar away. He talked about it. It took him years to be okay with getting shipped away. W- what was that like, sort of, as from a fan perspective, as someone who is a big time fan of dinosaur basketball? <laughs> I will say it stung so much that learning like yesterday, I think was the anniversary of that trade that I, when I found that out, I kind of was like, like, (laughs) I I went immediately back to where I was and what I was doing when I found out and how distraught I felt by it. Honestly, like I had, like they were like, it was so treacherous to me. (laughs) Like it was so visceral and so treacherous, I think, because also, you know, Masai Ujiri had met with DeMar DeRozan if not like weeks before and assured him he was like their future. (laughs) He had a place with the franchise, (laughs) you know? Um, And then you're like, oh, wait, all of that had a caveat because, you know, it suddenly became like possible to get Kawhi Leonard. Right. I understand this now in a fulsome, like, you know, retrospective sense. But at the time it was... um, yeah, it was stabbing somebody in the back and the heart simultaneously because DeMar DeRozan, you know, was the first person. I think he was the first player. And this is like post Vince Carter leaving and like all this kind of what we've alluded to before of just like when nobody wants to stay in your city or play for your franchise is the feeling. DeMar DeRozan was the first person who kind of bought into that and mm-hmm. decided like, actually, like I see an avenue of opportunity here to not only make a name for myself, but like maybe actually try make a good team, like a decent team. He convinced Kyle Lowry, who wanted to leave, like the season after he got there, that like they had a chance and Kyle bought in. They famously became best friends. They like co-led this this team to more playoff appearances than they'd ever had consistently. Right. And I get it. Like you get to a certain it's kind of it's the parallels to Dame are the same in that you you butt up against one specific point in the playoffs year after year after year. You're still so consistently good, but it stops meaning the same thing because you get used to it and you right. can never kind of like make it over that hump. So DeMar going to San Antonio wasn't terrible. It wasn't, we're not talking like Utah jazz proportions for Dame, but cause you're like, all right, he's in a good system. They really valued him. They were happy to have him, but I didn't really feel like he got over it and kind of came into his own until he left. Honestly, this is the same in breakups. It's like you break up with someone, you're very bitter it takes a couple maybe relationships flings, you know, to like get feel like back to yourself. And when he went to Chicago, I felt like, okay, he's finally, you know, he's in a leadership position. The Bulls maybe didn't work out the way we want them to. It's still right. a work in progress for, <laughs> for DeMar. But yeah, like he. But he's had a lot of success there. And I think he, like, he's, he has. you know, he's, he's been, he's been really good. And it's like an, we've had a late career appreciation of, oh, DeMar yeah. DeRozan actually is, is one of the really good guys in the league. Yeah. And I think the way he's personally kind of blossomed too and open up, like he's one of the most candid and thoughtful and honest, like heartfelt dudes we have in the league. We're very lucky for that, but he didn't really get that until he was kind of shoved out unceremoniously on his own, basically in the wild landscapes of the NBA where he didn't, he didn't have his best dude beside him kind of every single day. 
Um, so it took a lot. There was a lot of volatility with the franchise. I would say that that probably led to them, the Raptors, as I mean, letting guys walk for quote nothing, like with Kyle, like with Fred, like, right. you know, this is now kind of the price you pay as a franchise when you screw somebody over to that extent. And again, I, that's my kind of cautionary tale for the Blazers. So you want to do the right thing by this person because it's going to haunt you if you're a decent franchise for seasons to come. <laughs> and, and I think the, the Raptors are an interesting one because it worked. Like mm -hmm. it works. The ruthless <laughs> trade away an icon tra from his best friend to a place, you know, kind of blindside him, all those things. They won the freaking championship. Mm -hmm. Marcus Sol was chugging all that pink wine. He was drinking so much pink wine out in the streets. My man was getting after it. Yeah, it was a, it was a true. It was <laughs> that was really. I know that like the Grizzlies are, ha, have claimed to peak Marcus Sol and the greatest ever been, but that moment in the sun in Toronto, uh, holding a giant bottle of pink wine, that is a, a really a real special one in NBA lore. I will remember that Marcus Sol <laughs> for a long time. But it worked. Like it worked. This was this is the gamble. This is what franchise are doing right mm -hmm. treating humans like assets getting a better asset taking a risk which is like add good player for one season and hope it works and and um you know i think there are blazer fans who are say like do that because yeah you get the parade and the parade is forever um just it, how do you square the they won a title with they i don't know mistreated but they they kind of bungled the end of a relationship with someone who meant a lot to the organization. I mean, I think it's the way you approach your fandom and the way you want to watch basketball. Like you forfeit a relationship for a title to some people. That's no, that's a no brainer, right? right. To other people. I think like, so too, yeah. yeah. Um, it's to like other they're people, like, give me that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's a bit more complicated. Um, and you know, this is all to say like now many years after the fact, the relationships have been repaired. You know, Raptors aren't, well, actually, I don't know. The Raptors aren't in a really great place right now, all things considered. Right. They have a different group of like group of characters and group of guys in there, but there is a trickle down effect, right? Um, and it it kind of take it for Toronto at least has taken some of the shine off the title. Again, probably not for everybody, <laughs> but if you right. were, if you were really kind of interrogate and look closely at even the business side of things, there are there are permeations to making bad. Uh, interpersonal decisions and i think toronto has seen that and again like do, do the blazers really care like as a business at the end of the day not really like they want to sell tickets they they should like they want to win a title uh it's the best way to kind of like secure your spot as a winning franchise for for years and years to come um but back to the practicalities of it i just don't actually see who the big swing would be for I agree. That's that's the problem is that they're, they're in a spot where it's like there is no Kawhi Leonard out there. There is yeah. no like other disgruntled swap or something like that. Um, you know, I, I guess the idea would be Jalen Brown, but that's not Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> like That's not yeah. one of the five best players in the NBA. Um, Jalen Brown's really good. I like him. Um, Me too. I think. Yeah, it, like I think he's a, a, just a darn good basketball player. Even if he doesn't dribble well with his left hand, guys, I've seen the videos. Um, <laughs> I've, I've watched the NBA Finals and the Eastern Conference Finals the last two years. Um, they know too. But even that, like I think that's the best like realistic option that's out there, right? It's like a Jalen Brown swap. That doesn't vault the Blazers into that next category. And it kind of vultures some of their young players' minutes. And mm -hmm. Jalen Brown is entering a contract year. Like um, if he signs the giant contract with Boston, he can't be traded. If he doesn't, you either you're in this risk of losing him or you're just going to give him a giant contract. And then you're kind of like, this is our thing. We are a Jalen Brown, Jeremy Grant team. And that's like, that's not, that's, that's, that's just like not a, not a super good basketball team. That's you're pr pretty fun. You add more talent. The point of the league is to add more talent um, to some extent, but there isn't an obvious guy out there. And I think the Blazers have, I think the the thing about this is the Blazers knew this was coming. They knew this was coming. The idea that this blind side of them is silly. Dame said it clearly. And if he said it clearly in public to us in March or whenever that was April, what do you think he said behind the scenes? 
What do you think? What do you think? The, what do you think the whispers were behind the scenes, right? Like if he said it so openly in front of a microphone at X interviews, I think that's the first time Joe Cronin knew that Damian Lillard might be um, unsettled in his situation. And if you know he's unsettled, you have an opportunity to DeMar DeRozan his ass. You can you can actually move quickly and send him <laughs> to another place. If you, but if that's not available, you end up in this weird spot, and that's where they are. And now we're like debating who owes who what. And I think the truth is that nobody owes anyone anything at any point in our lives. <laughs> That's the bigger and more true point. Yeah. And take away from all. <laughs> That's true. A little, that might be a little bleak, um, but it's it, the, the real truth is like you give Dame gave people Dame gave the Blazers a lot mm -hmm. and the Blazers have tried to give him the best they can. And now that they are, and they're in a situation where they can probably no longer give him what he wants and they've chosen not to do that. And so the, it's, it, it's, it's time to find, in my opinion, it's time to find a resolution to this. And the resolution is like, it's pretty narrow. It's pretty yeah. narrow. The resolution is pretty, it's pretty, it's right there. Um, maybe they find a way to expand it and, and everyone gets what they want and everyone feels happy asset wise. Um, but I think, I, I really do think one of the worst things that could happen to the end of the Dame era is him coming back to Portland and playing under semi-protest or worse yet, staying home and not playing. Mm -hmm. That seems like the worst way to end this. Please, please don't make us do it this Which way. I don't think he would do. Neither do I. Yeah, like his character, I don't really think he has that in him at all. Um, I did want to say of like your point of, was that the first time Cronin heard it? It's like, no, that's like a, that's like a, to me that reads as like a quintessential pressure move. It's like behind closed doors, you weren't hearing me. You didn't respond the way I wanted you to. I'm right. going to turn the heat up a notch oh heat sorry sorry um, temperature you meant temperature <laughs> yeah the, t the temperature uh <laughs> and this is the last comparison i'll make to the raptors but when i think of that team that Kawhi stepped into you still had your co-pilot who had basically built this thing season after season understood intimately like the blueprints took a long time to come around like kyle larry didn't really want to start playing basketball with Kawhi, and he said this until like january you know, the Gasol trade probably helped, but you see, you know, someone who saw their best shot to a title and was like, okay, like I'm going to hand the reins to this franchise over, like I'll be the driver, he'll be the engine, but the Blazers aren't in that position. So nope. even if you're trading for one, I don't know, equal, because not better, superstar, right. semi-equal, yeah, or maybe a little, not as, maybe less than equal, um, yeah. You don't you've lost so much institutional knowledge in that sense right because you've got just like now your hope is in your young guys and that kind of takes some of the shine off them too so again to me all roads seem to lead to one very clear decision when it when they make it that's sort of like the time ticking down is also not good when you don't want to let things fester because whoever's yeah. coming in you want to give them the best shot to acclimatize and get used to the situation right because you assume it doesn't matter when dame leaves James ready to go to Miami and fit yeah, right he's in. Gone, right? Yeah. yeah, like that's easy for him. Uh, he's a vet, like he's a star. He can do that. But whoever's coming there, they got to get used to things. And you don't want that to take as long as possible. Right. You don't want to punt on several months or whatever when you can just say, let's rip the bandaid off and go for mm -hmm. it. Katie, where can people find more of you if they're looking for you? We have said it so many times. Thank you. I'm the worst self-promoter, but... That's why I got you on here because I can promote, baby. <laughs> you can. You're very good at it. Um, basketballfeelings.com. It's a great place to start. You can follow me on Twitter as long as that's still around at whatevs, W T E V S. Um, I should have some stuff coming out of Summer League at Yahoo Sports Canada, also for Dime. Um, yeah. But uh, those two, those two other places are the most consistent. That's that's a great start for, for everybody. <laughs> are, are we on summer vacation watch yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, we're on Summer Vacation Watch, NBA Summer Vacation Watch, in its, I want to say, sixth year? A lot. A sixth lot of years. A lot, a lot, a lot of, of years at a lot of different places. Yeah, that thing moves because you can't <laughs> stop Summer Vacation. But it is now at Dime. Uh, we've so far had two installments. I was at Summer League for way too long. I was in the desert for nine days, uh, as you know. So I had to catch up. Uh, on some summer vacays, but I'm happy to report they're still going strong and I got a dispatch cooking. 
It's the best. Uh, nobody appreciates people having downtime in the NBA quite like Katie. No one meanders with nuance better than Katie anywhere yeah. in the world. Go read Basketball Feelings. She's doing it. She's doing it better than your faves, or at least in a way that they aren't, because it, it, the sort of unique way that Katie synthesizes what we watch in basketball, um, you're not going to find anywhere else. Go check it out, basketballfeelings.com. Come back for tomorrow's show. We do this five days a week, Monday through Friday, wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. The way that you can help grow Locks on Blazers is tell a friend about it, then come back for tomorrow's show. I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.